welcome to worship. Today, we begin a brand new message series, Join the Celebration. And there'll be a lot of things we have to celebrate during this series. Actually, let's begin the celebration right now. Happy Easter, everyone. He has risen. And there are offering tables in the back of the sanctuary. And please feel free to drop off your offerings as you enter or exit worship today. And we also have our Mug Money mission. And our mission for this quarter is for everybody always at 1400. And for more information on this amazing ministry, please contact Kathy Hoskins. And Children's Church for those at the second grade. When prompted, please exit quickly and quietly with your Children's Church leader. Oh, and we also have Toddler's Church available for those ages 1 to 3. Don't forget. And we have several events happening within the church. April 24th, we'll be needing your help to set up the closed closet for Living Bridges in the Fellowship Hall. And on April 27th, we'll be set the closed closet and we'll be needing volunteers to help out from 6 to 7.30. And on May 1st, we'll be an advisory board meeting. And make sure to email your ministry team reports to Miss Kayla, not Pastor Mike, to 1400teach at gmail.com. And on May 11th, it'll be a VBS workshop at 6.30. And May 15th will be Senior Recognition Day. If you have a senior that would like to be recognized on this day of accomplishment, please contact Miss Kayla immediately. And for a full list of announcements, please check out our website at www.thechurchgrade.org. And as they say, Sundays are coming. Well, Sunday has came, and it is time to prepare our hearts for worship. Shame is a prison as cruel a grave shame is a robber and he's come to take my name oh love is my redeemer lifting me up from the ground love is the power where my freedom song is found there ain't no
We do something just a little different this morning. Yeah. How about if I give you some instructions? How about that? Uh, since we do have some new faces, and uh, are we happy to see new faces? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're happy to see. Yeah, we're happy to see new faces. We do something here at the church every single worship service, right? Right. It's a it's a reminder that this is a building, and we are the we are the church. So we are going to start it out, and I want everybody to be able to do this, right? So I'll say welcome to the building at 1400, we're at 1400 South Broad Street, in case you don't know where you are. Welcome to the building at 1400, and I'm looking for the church, and your response will be, we are here, but we'll do it better than that. Ready? 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 Welcome to the building at 1400, I'm looking for the church. We are here. That's what I'm talking about. There's a couple seats up here. Um, happy Easter. Uh, one of the traditional, in the early church, uh, the people would uh, greet one another and uh, very excited about what was going on. Say One would say, he is ridden, risen, and, or, or ridden. He is risen, and the response would be, he is risen indeed. Um, and, and we are thankful that you're here and joining the celebration. Our message series, uh, Join the Celebration, actually starts today. And I can't think of a better day. Um, we have several celebrations that are planned. Graduating high school seniors. Uh, Pentecost, which is seen as the birth of the church. But it's also the anniversary of us coming together as a congregation. Lots of uh, things that we'll celebrate together. So invite somebody to come. Uh, I do want to thank the 1,400 men. Uh, for cooking and serving breakfast this morning. Did you have any? The band's going to have it at, oh, afterwards. Um, uh, we have shared a lot of prayer requests back and forth, and uh, but I do want to talk about one uh, specifically and have been given permission uh, this morning. Uh, Kyle Ware, um, they've, uh, the Ware family has been visiting with us uh, for a while, uh, but anyway, Kyle is over in ICU in Archfall, and uh, supposed to have a procedure this morning. Uh, so we just need to be uh, praying uh, that it happens if it needs to happen, and that it goes well. How many of you are like me, and you got some unspoken stuff? He hears those as well. Let's take it all to him this morning. Lord, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for loving us the way that you do. What an incredible day to come and celebrate you on this Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. Darkness filled this earth until you provided the light. Our lives were doomed, uh, locked up in separation until you provided the way. We come together marveling over an empty tomb. What an incredible sight. 
We lift up our voices and proclaim the truth. He is risen. He is risen indeed. In the resurrection, it changed everything. He gave us hope, not only today, but for the future. Let us live not only today, but every single day as Easter people, your people. Let us not get caught up in the temporary situations or the darkness and lose sight of the fact that you have brought us new life. Father, we come, every single one of us, um, we, we come thanking you for what it is that you have done. We look around and there is chaos. There's chaos all over to be seen. But right now we're putting all that aside and we're, we're focusing absolutely only on you. Only on the beauty of Easter. Let this not be temporary. Let, let this be something that we take uh, home with us in the, in the drive home and into our, into our uh, homes, into our family life. And then we go share that at work or school or wherever it is that we go from there. Father, we come here rejoicing what you have done, what you are doing. Let us be able to see that, but let us cling to that hope. Funerals would be absolutely horrible if it weren't for the truth that will be unfolded today and remembered once again. Father, as we, if we come and we praise you and we worship you today, we know that all of those who have, who have outrun us to your throne, that every single one of them is worshiping right here with us this day. Let us and all the saints come together and lift our voices, lift our spirits, lift all of ourselves up to you today. We pray these things in the blessed, holy name of Jesus. Amen.
displayed on a criminal's cross and darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost then Jesus arose with our freedom in hand sing it with me that's when death was arrested my life be that's when death was arrested and my life be oh, oh, oh it's your grace so free washes over me you have made us new search the world but it couldn't feel me the man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough then you came along and put me back together and every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. Lord, you 
third morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the Um, if you will, thank, thank the band for what they do. Um, I, w- I was sitting there. Um, uh, I was moved to tears by um, um, the message, the message through song. It reminded me, it was, I don't know, I don't want to do the math. It was probably uh, 15 or more years ago. Karen and I had worked really hard uh, at a church and put together a, a uh, program. We uh, flew in a guy from up north. He came down and we had, we'd put the word out. And um, uh, it was my understanding the sanctuary of where we were would hold 300 people. And we had 303 people there that morning um, at a, uh, 8.45 in the morning. Okay, So um, we were all excited, but... The part, the reason I'm telling you this story, is that uh, the uh, senior pastor had uh, been in the back uh, doing something, and so he came in and he didn't understand the gravity of what was going on. He didn't understand all the work that had been put into doing it. And he came in, he walked, and he looked around, and he saw everybody sitting there, and he and he looked at me with all the confidence in the world and says, "Look at all these people, and you're preaching." second part to that, I had another pastor that really taught me a lot. And we walked out of a, walked out of a service, and uh, he looked at me, he says, you did good. You did good. And 
I said, well, just feeling like I have something's going on before I get up there. And I feel like I'm going to be sick. He said, ever go away. And he looked square at me and he says, I hope it doesn't. Okay. Something beautiful um, happened. And I'm here to try the very best I can um, to um, share that old, old story once again. And it is uh, it's an old story that's been told many, many times. It's been told by many, many preachers, and it's being retold by the many people that have heard the story, a uh, story that's worth telling over and over. And I'm not sure how far uh, back this story goes, but I know it uh, goes back at least into the 50s where the great Billy Graham um, had told it. And I'm going to tell uh, this in very similar fashion. It's told that there was a tour group that was going through uh, the Louvre Museum, which is over in Paris. And um, the tour guide would, would take the people around and was talking about the different paintings that were there. And maybe say something about the painting, something about the artist, something about the subject matter uh, as he would go. And um, there's a painting there hanging in, the, or it was in the Louvre. Now it's actually in a, in a uh, private uh, collection uh, by Moritz Retzt. And um, it's, it goes by a name, but the popular uh, name that it's known by is Checkmate. And um, if you know anything about the game of chess, you know that it all comes down to when the king on either side can move no more. And uh, once the king is trapped, the winner declares checkmate and the game's over. And that painting uh, hanging uh, before them in this tour, it has uh, two chess players. One of them is Satan, and sitting there arrogantly confident in what's going on. And the other player, uh, he, do, he looks kind of uh, highly distraught and he's, he's concerned. See, if Satan wins, he wins the man's soul. And uh, after the group had heard the details about the painting, the group moved on to the next piece of art. But one man, though, he stayed behind, uh, looking ever so closely at the painting. What a horrible vision. If you understand the ramification of what's going on, Satan wins and the man is lost. So we find ourselves today um, doing a little catch-up. Here at the church, we try to follow the Christian calendar. Um, as, as much as we can, and uh, so we're a liturgical church as far as that concerns, but we also, in the, in the message series that we follow, sometimes we get off that, uh, off, off of some of that uh, preparing, uh, although we did prepare well for the Easter celebration, um, and, and, I, and I think the last series did that. We didn't stay with the prescribed text for, uh, for this season. Last week, we did have the kids to come in, and they processed with, uh, with the palms on Palm Sunday. But scripturally, a whole lot has happened in, in Holy Week. Remember, Jesus came into Jerusalem uh, to finish, complete his mission and ministry uh, here, here on earth. He rode in on a donkey, and the, the people there were, were uh, welcomed him in as the king. Uh, and those even looking for a Messiah, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And it was a beautiful day, but things went south very, very quickly. He goes through, he has his last meal with his disciples, and, and they still didn't get it. They still didn't understand what was going on. He's be betrayed by Judas. He's accused of crimes that he didn't commit, brutally beaten, mocked, and placed on a cross to die an excruciating death. And there are witnesses that see all of that happen. And they see his lifeless body being placed in a borrowed tomb. If you want a picture of darkness, that's it. If you, it uh, the, the, the hopelessness that had, had to have been experienced. And well, here, here you've got it. And it certainly seems as if Satan has won. Death has taken its toll, right? Well, according to the legend of the Checkmate painting, the tour guide realizes that the one man has left the group and he has remained behind. He doesn't want him missing out on some of the, 
uh, some of the popular things, uh, the, the paintings that are there. You know, the Mona Lisa, you certainly want to, and the, the guy's not standing there as people supposedly do for hours and hours and days and days looking at the Mona Lisa. He's not in front of Mona Lisa, he's in front of Checkmate. And so as he comes to kind of hurry him along, uh, he's not budging. And uh, his, uh, the, according to the legend, the man says, you know, I'm a, I'm a chess grand master. There's something that's not right here. See, I've studied it. I've studied it. And one of two things needs to happen. The artist is either going to have to come and redraw this, or you're going to have to change the name. This uh, chess grand master goes on to explain that after close inspection, that it seems that Satan, it seemed that Satan was the obvious winner, but in fact, he was not winning at all. The man, who obviously knows what he's talking about, um, uh, the, the, the man in the painting was thought to be losing, he's actually winning. And so, according to the arrangement of the pieces that were left on, on the chessboard, the king had one more move and that fateful move would make him the winner of the game the player who looks like he's doomed had the ability to defeat the opponent though he didn't realize it at the moment but his king had one more move Join me, if you will, in Luke's Gospel, Luke 24, where I'm going to read verses 1 through 12. I'm reading out of the message translation. At the crack of dawn on Sunday, the women came to the tomb carrying the burial spices they had prepared. They found the entrance stone rolled back from the tomb, so they walked in. But once inside, they couldn't find the body of the Master Jesus. They were puzzled, wondering what to make of this. Then, out of nowhere it seemed, two men, light cascading over them, stood there. The women were awestruck and bowed down in worship. The men said, why are you looking for the living one in a cemetery? He is not here, but raised up. Remember how he told you when you were still back in Galilee that he had to be handed over to sinners? be killed on a cross, and in three days rise up. Then they remembered Jesus' words. They left the tomb and broke the news of all of this to the eleven and the rest. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them kept telling these things to the apostles, but the apostles didn't believe a word of it thought they were making it all up, but Peter jumped to his feet and ran to the tomb. He stooped to look in and saw a few grave clothes. Clothes, that's all. He walked away, puzzled, shaking his head. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So here, here is the Easter story. And here we've got people that are looking at the situation, looking at the truth of it. And it's, to them, it still seems dark. It still, at this moment, it still seems hopeless. But guess what? The king had one more move. The king had one more move. And the last ones at the cross, the, the ladies, the last ones at the cross, they're the first ones to be there. And uh, I think on your next steps, I actually have us to play with that one a little bit. You know, can you imagine uh, the, these faithful women, how faithful women have carried the church for years and years and years. So this morning, we're, we're thankful. Uh, we're, we're thankful for you. But these women had come to tend to the dead body of Jesus. That's what they were looking for. And uh, they're greeted by these two, two men. The other gospel writers tell us that those are angels. These men are shining. Uh, um, uh, there's no darkness there. But the women didn't pick up on what was actually occurring. It's there. The, the, the truth is there. They still haven't like put it all together. And so the angels ask that telling question. Why are you looking for the living one in a cemetery? Do you not remember what he told you? See, he told you this way back when you were in Galilee. He told you that this was going to happen. Um, that he would be handed over, over to sinners, be killed on a cross, and in three days would rise up. 
And they couldn't find the lifeless body in the tomb. Why? Because he was alive. He was alive. He'd been brought back to a new life. The team had one more move that was going to make it all make make it not only him be able to win, but also uh, us. Anyway, so these women they go back to tell the disciples what what they've seen and what they've heard, and the disciples they write it off as is rambling, the, babbling. These these women they don't know what they're talking about. How can that be? And they had seen the game board that was sitting out right in front of them. Death had occurred. And you don't just bounce back from that, do you? Satan had obviously won. And that's what they're... And you can, you can almost see Peter with, with his, as he's uh, watching you know, with his hand on his, on his head just thinking. When John's gospel, we, we read that uh, Peter and John went to see things for themselves and they wanted to check the story out and uh, but I got to throw this one out here especially on on this Easter Sunday why in the world were they together well they hung out together a lot but I think I think the fact that they are together shows something and it shows some, shows us something as a church if you remember uh, Peter had messed up right he, he had denied Christ and we'll get into that actually next week. But but John is there. I'm seeing him with his arm around Peter, telling him it's going to be okay. And I think that's I think it, or even on an Easter day like this, where some of us we have our hurts that we are we're experiencing now. I think we need to walk with those people uh, that that maybe either think they've messed up or they know that they messed up and we need to be walking with them and I and I and I think that's part of the reason that John uh, was so close to him that he was comforting him uh, during that time but even that very moment seeing the empty tomb Peter he stares and he walks away the scripture today said puzzled he he, he really he, he he really doesn't understand and you can almost see him just, just pondering what it is that's going on. He doesn't fully understand that the king had one more move, but he did. And uh, the women knew what they knew. They didn't know what to make of it, but they knew what they knew. And they held on to that until they actually have it confirmed. And we'll get into that next week. So make sure and come back. The story continues. But, but uh, uh, until they actually have the risen Savior himself come and present himself uh, to them. The most faithful of the disciples were, were those. And they were filled with hope. Even though they didn't understand it, they were filled with faith. And this is a call for celebration. He is risen. He's risen indeed, and, and, and sometimes we have to hold on to that that we have not yet seen because of that one truth. He was alive back then, he's alive even today. And uh, Jesus came here uh, to this earth on a rescue mission. And his blood, which poured out on that cross, there, were, there, was, there was a need for that, uh, for the perfect sacrifice to come, and he took our place on that cross he took he he paid the sin debt that we could not pay for ourselves and because he lives no I'm not gonna do it <laughs> some because he lives I can face tomorrow I'm gonna say it not sing it uh, but because he lives because he lives then when we believe in him when we trust him we too have that opportunity to live into eternity with him and God repeatedly all through the scripture uh, he assures his people that there's a way there's always a way of escaping situations even where it seems hopeless even when I can't see how it how it's going to work out he tells all the way through uh, when the people in Judah were deported to Babylon um, because of their sinful ways uh, God revealed that there will be a future day of release. That day will come when, uh, just as God provided water to the Israelites in the desert, there is no water out there, but he provided just like he provided for them on the long trek home. 
If you go over to the sixth chapter of John, little boy, he comes and there's people that need to be fed. We've got two fish and we've got a few loaves, loaves of bread, but yet thousands are being able. How does that happen? But, but uh, God repeatedly tells us that not only uh, am I going to take care of it, but after they fed them, there were baskets of food left over. How, how, does, how does that happen? The 8th chapter of John, it looks like checkmate for the woman that's, uh, that appears to, she's about to be stoned and killed by a bunch of angry men. But Jesus tells the woman, go and sin no more. See, there, there's, there's a way. He's provided a way. On Good Friday, a criminal next to Jesus on the cross thought it was the end. But you know what? He still repented. And, and how wonderful. Can you imagine uh, him hearing those words? You'll be with me in paradise. And... and, and uh, anyway, it, it, to me, that's just mind-boggling that it doesn't seem like there's a way, but there's a way. Too often in, in, in this world, in our life, we consider the world um, you know, to be a mess. There's war going on. There's violence. There's pandemics. You tired of that word? Um, unemployment, struggling marriages, depression, isolation, and that list can go on and on and on. There's all this entanglement. And it's so easy to get disillusioned by the things that we see, but that uh, people begin to feel lost, they feel hopeless, they look for direction, and they end up on the wrong path because they weren't seeking in the right place. And it certainly looks like checkmate, doesn't it? But we need not feel that the game is over. I love the songs today, and I don't know why I heard it differently uh, today, but uh, death has been defeated. Death has been overcome. All those things, you know, uh, you ask people uh, what, what, uh, what their biggest fear is. Uh, public speaking, dying, or someone near them, and, and all of that has been uh, uh, moved over here to a, a moment of hope because our Creator God, has one move less, and our lives and our futures are in His hand. Our God, our our God, our Lord is the only King who can never be defeated. That's who you have on your side. That's who we have on our side, the one that we celebrate today. And that's something that needs to be celebrated. Do you, do you not agree? But I need to make something perfectly clear. He's made the path. He's put the way out in front of us. But he isn't going to force you into a relationship with him. He puts it out there and says, here it is for all you have to do is, is accept the relationship that I offer you. Coming to the table and sitting with him and humbling yourself. And letting, letting him know that you trust him. Let him know that you believe in his son, Jesus Christ. And asking for forgiveness. And guess what? When you come and you ask, he gives it. He grants it. And, um, and then you tell him that you want to follow him. See, we can't come here on an Easter Sunday and proclaim the victory. Uh, and as we look into an empty tomb. See, we know the rest of the story that will unfold for these guys uh, next week. We know the way that it, that, it, that, it, that it ends, but we can't just know the story. We have to accept the story, and we have to live it out ourselves. So we, we've sat here way too long uh, with our hands on our heads. We, we felt like we were losing, and uh, we felt like we were trapped, and we felt defeated. But listen to this. It's an old, old story, and it's been told by many, many people. And it's been retold by many, many people who heard the story. And it's a story that's worth telling over and over. That new life is available to you. New life is available to you because he lives. You too can live. But we have to, we have to receive that. The Easter message is, is one that invites you to move toward him, to come toward him, to come take a look because he has won the victory.
My question is, will you come and join the celebration? Lord, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for loving us the way that you do. What a beautiful day for us to come and remember the grave could not hold Jesus. We're thankful for the borrowed tomb. He didn't need it long. As we come and we peer into some of the emptiness that's in our life. As we look at some of the situations that have us frustrated. As we look at some of the ways that we have tried to figure out the path forward. And we found that we were on the wrong path. Help us to look at that empty tomb and let us see that new life. Let us see the hope. Let us see the, the possibilities of, of, of what it looks like to come and take your hand and allow you to be able to guide us into this newness. Father, we're thankful for that debt that was paid on the cross. We're even more excited about the empty tomb. Let us live in the newness of life. Let us be Easter people, not only this day, but every single day. Let us live our lives so full of, of celebration that we can't hardly contain ourselves. Father, we come once again giving all of ourselves to you. Even those parts that we've been holding back. Let this be the day. Let this be the day that we put off any procrastination, any, any uh, put down any pride. And we come and say, here I am. You're worthy. And I need more of you in my life. We pray these things in the blessed, holy name of Jesus. Amen. The altar's open this morning. I can't think of a better day. Uh, to come and spend time with him, to thank him for what it is uh, that he's done. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I'd love to talk to you about that today. Um, just, I'll, I'll be up here, just grab me. Let's, let's, let's talk. Because he can't make the move for you. He provided the way, but you've got to make the move. Uh, if you're part of another church, uh, we don't have members here. We have partners in ministry. Karen's down here on the front row. Uh, just, just come and say, you know what? Um, I, would, I would love to. Uh, we believe in the priesthood of all believers that every single one of us is called to ministry in some point. And, you know, we would love to partner with you in whatever it is that, um, uh, whatever it is that he's calling you to do. But uh, she'll get some basic information. However he's leading you this morning, the altar of the Lord is up to you. search the world but it couldn't feel me man's empty praise and treasures it fade are never enough then you came along and put me back together Every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is.